Landscape architects use the term desire line to describe the unpaved, unplanned paths that develop over time as a result of erosion caused by foot traffic. This path represents the most easily navigated route by the individuals who created it, and it illuminates the barriers in the original design. This new route isn't always the aesthetic path, but it's walkable. It may not be the typically elevated footway, but it holds its own glory. In these desire lines, we see the formation of a trail that makes the journey possible. These are the stories of the second path and the students who danced on the edgeways to make it their own. So during my senior year at Duke, I worked as a volunteer policy intern for Made in Durham, which is a nonprofit organization that connects early school leavers with opportunities to continue their education. I built landscape analyses for policy research and drafted matching models for the programs. But as the internship wrapped up and came to an end, it sort of felt unfinished. I had done all of this work, but really had no understanding of the students it was being done for. I wanted to hear and learn and tell their stories. So that's basically what I set out to do. The summer after graduation, with support from the Center for Doc Studies, I spent time with these students. They told me about their lives and their families and the barriers that kept them from being able to stay in the traditional public school setting, and how they were ultimately able to redefine success in their education through the second path. They had this path of their own, a village of their own that poured out support along the way, and a story of triumph of their own. I hope that this evening you can see what I saw. Three incredibly ambitious, determined, passionate individuals who overcame the odds to find success and see their dreams unfold. My name is Marquise Thomas. I got my high school diploma from the Performance Learning Center, and I am now at Durham Tech. My name is Crystal Campos Cortez. I am 19 years old, and I am part of Achievement Academy. My name is Anteus Faulkner, and I was a part of the Gateway to College program at Durham Technical Community College, and now I'm currently a senior at University of North Carolina Greensboro. I am the first sibling to graduate high school, so that was like pretty big on me after failing my freshman year to like get myself together and make it to where my younger siblings will have something to look up to. So I had my days, they were challenging, but I knew I had to do it. I knew I had to get it done. There was times where I had been homeless, we went without food for months, lights for days, water for days. All off of my grandmother trying to make it for all eight of my mother's kids, so doing it by herself, so it was it was rough for us. Those challenges they would come unexpectedly, like that's what that's what like get me. My grandmother, she got sick back in 2011-2012, the year before my freshman year, but she her sick prolonged to the end of my freshman year, which is probably why I failed cuz I was in another school dealing with her, making sure he, she'd take her medicine, um making sure she was okay. When I joined POC, over the summers, they had helped me get an internship. And I was working at Durham Bulls Stadium. I worked at um, American Tobacco downtown as well. 
they would send us to like food banks and stuff to like help us get food and stuff. They really showed a lot of support. And all of my teachers were good. They were all good. My favorite was Miss Paula Jennings, Miss Keisha Futrell. She was my academy director, but now she's the principal of PLC. They were just as determined as I was for me to graduate. I never met a teacher that would like be on me. Like, come on, Mr. Thomas, come on. You gotta get it done. You gotta get up out of here. I see your effort. I see what you're doing. Like, it was a lot of those teachers. I am most proud of after walking across that stage and seeing my grandmother and my mom and the graduation stands just crying their eyes out and, and me walking out the building and just seeing them and they both hugged me at the same time it was just such a blessing to me because that's what I wanted like that was what I wanted and the night before my graduation my mom would not let me sleep <laughs> She wouldn't. That's something I can like really say stuck with me and still does. Like she wouldn't let me sleep. She was more proud of me than I am of myself. Like it was such a heartwarming moment. Something I've been needing. So I'm successful because I really truly wanted my siblings to watch me grow. I wanted them to have, to look at me as like, my brother did it, I gotta do it. And not too many people can actually live a hard life growing up and still be this strong, come out this strong. So it was like, gotta lead the way somehow I have tons of advice I can give you a list of things if you have siblings you may think they don't look up to you but they do they watch and follow your every footstep like you watched and follow your mother or father's footstep I would tell a student that is struggling that if you feel as though you want to drop out, don't. Like, find another alternative and go forth with what you think is best for you. Like, there's other help and options out there. Like, if you don't want to leave traditional schools and you are failing, get as much tutor help as you can. Like, that helps in the long run. Like. Even when you get to colleges, they're going to have tutors for you too. So you're going to be okay. Just do what's best for you. And lastly, follow your dreams. Go forth with it. Whatever you want to do, do it. You can be successful. Before Achievement Academy, I went to the School of Creative Studies. It's a pretty good school. I loved it, but since I got pregnant, I had to drop out, look for some other options. The thing I like about it was that when I got pregnant, I was 15 years old, so I was really young, but I didn't get no bullying. The teachers were really supportive. If anything, if I was feeling sick or something, they would let me go to an office and just sit there and do my work. They were really supportive. I decided to leave because I feel like I wasn't spending much time with my daughter and my boyfriend. I've been with him for seven years, but he is a kidney failure and a heart failure. So when he got with that, I felt like I needed to work. So I decided to drop out. So I started working when I was 16, but I didn't want to like stay without having a diploma. So I had a lot of challenges after 
dropping out of the School of Creative Studies. Going back to starting Achievement Academy, they helped me out a lot too. And I met great people there. But at that time when I started, I quit going again to Achievement Academy because I had some challenges right there with my daughter. I didn't have nobody who would take care of her. My job, what I was getting paid was not enough so I could pay a babysitter. So I had to drop out and wait till I got a voucher for um, daycare. Once I got the voucher for the daycare, I called them. I was like, hey, I'm ready to go. They said, okay, you can start whenever you want to. The first day my daughter went to daycare, I went to Achievement Academy. And I was ready to go. I was excited. I wanted to do it, but like I couldn't at that time. So I had to wait. And then I, I waited till I got the voucher. My daughter started daycare. I started going to Achievement Academy. And it was took me like six months, five months to get my GED. I wanted to get it over with. Like, I feel like it was something I need, and I had to do it. And I'm that type of person that when she wants something, I'll get it. Like, I, ha I have to. My experience was great. It was awesome. The class when I have, like, 10 people. So I feel like when there's less people, we learn more because, like, the teacher can help you explain better if you have some problems or something. My favorite subject was math and science. The difficult thing was uh, English and um, reading. That was hard. I worked more on that, but the teacher, Miss Kate, she was just awesome explaining, and she would always tell me, just keep trying. And it was difficult, it was hard. But like I told you, like when you want something, you get it. If you really want it, that's when you work with it. So I had my job also. I had a part-time in the afternoons. I had, um, in the mornings, I went to Achievement Academy, so I didn't spend much time with my daughter, but on the weekends, and I worked on the weekends also, so it was just like a uh, part-time. My mom helped me out a lot also. She's really supportive. She took care of me. She took me to her house for a month. She was like, I take care of the baby, don't worry, take a nap, or like she would cook the food for me. So there's like this like chicken soup that we make, it's called caldo de pollo. So it's like when you're sick or something, you get that caldo de pollo. And it's like something you eat and it makes you better. So she was always there cooking for me. Like even she had to work, she stopped working to take care of me. So it was hard. Like there were nights when I would just like say, I wanna quit, I can't do it no more. But like in my head, I didn't have that option. Like no quitting, you just do it. You have to do it. <laughs> I would tell someone who's struggling that it's going to be hard. It's always hard, no matter what, it's always hard. If it's not one thing, it's another, because I've been through a lot with that. And just keep trying, don't give up. There's different kind of people, there's positive people, and there's a lot of negative people. It's hard because you used to your culture, your family, and once your parents decide to come to the United States, you don't even know their language. It's really, really hard. It's difficult. And back in my days, they would bully me a lot or try to bully my brother because we didn't know English. And there's people that think that they're more than you because you're just getting here. You're just starting. But I learned that no matter what, if you want to do something, you can do it. I am successful because, I don't know, <laughs> because I have done a lot of things that I, I didn't think I was going to, like getting my GED, like having a scholarship. Not everybody gets a scholarship, and it's not easy, so I feel like really blessed, like so successful with that because I got it and I accomplished something that I didn't even think I would ever do. I I think um, a lot Roxalas because she was the one who helped me out with that. So she was there, she was like, Crystal, remember you have to do this, Crystal, this, Crystal. So she's the one that always pushed me. So I feel like I've done a lot of things thanks to her. I Like I told her before, she's my hero. She has helped me out with um, school, with like my personal life, everything. She's just like, I need something, I call Roxalis. <laughs>
like always. So I told her before, like she's just to me, she's like a superhero. She helped me out a lot. She's just, I don't know, she's just great. It is hard to find a job without having like a diploma or something. And me as being Hispanic and not having certain papers that I need, it's like even harder. So it's like, um, it's something I tell every everybody I know, my sister, my cousins, I'm like, stay in school. Don't do the same thing I did because at the end of the day, I don't regret having my baby because she's my everything, but I also want to give her a better life, have her living better than what I had. You need your education, and I learned that, not in a good way, but I learned it, and now I just want everybody to know that Sometimes, I know we don't like school. Sometimes we think it's boring. At the end of the day, you're gonna need it. You need it. And it's like something you're gonna need it. Something that's always gonna help you out. Before I was at Gateway to College, I was working uh, full time. Um, I had dropped out of school. And I tried to go to Greensboro Technical Community College. And that didn't work out. I wanted to go to Job Corps. And that didn't work out. So I was just a full-time worker until Gateway to College. I went to Southern High School of Durham. That was the last high school I went to. I was 16, um, my mom, single mom. She uh, was working hard with me and my brother and my sister. And I was of age and I felt like I wanted to do something that would help her so she didn't have to work as much. Uh, because around this time, I wouldn't see my mom a lot because she'd be at work. Uh, so I decided that I'd go to Job Corps and get a GED and a trade and thus start working to help her. Um, so that was my whole plan. And I had talked to her and I talked to my dad about it and they were like, well, you know, I really don't approve, but you know, you're gonna do what you wanna do. So I know now because of where I'm at, like the challenges that I faced. I didn't realize them when I was in school. But one was enjoying what I liked to do without the peer pressure of others. And that was theater. That was enjoying the things that the people that I grew up with or grew up around didn't think were normal. You know, I was into ballet, orchestra music, and, and jazz, and, and theater, musical theater all these things that in my neighborhood would be considered like whack or lame. So being like peer pressured to not like these things, I sort of let that like deter me from going after my dreams. And there was a time where I was on a bus. Uh, we drove by DSA, which is Durham School of the Arts. And I remember this, I was like, there's DSA. And everyone on the bus was like, yeah, it's a whack school, it's lame. It's like, that's where all the losers go. And I was like, yeah. And I sat down and I was like, God, I wish I could go there. I do not want to be here. Like, I want to be there. Yeah, so I look back on that a lot. My experience with Job Corps was, it was okay, but I just felt like I had a plan for me that wasn't that, so that's why it didn't work out. I did miss school, but I didn't miss my school, if that makes sense. Um, I miss the education, educational setting. Uh, I miss learning, but I didn't miss other. Um, I did miss the theater department. So I got connected with Gateway to College uh, through several people. Um, my brother was in a program where he had like mentors because he was troubled a little. They were giving him like pamphlets for places that he can go, continue his education if public schools didn't work out. And there was this program called the, the YES program that he joined. Um, so my mom was like, you should do YES program. They'll help you get a GED. And I'm just like, oh, I'm working, I'm good. And then I met a friend, her name is Wendy Gale. And she let me work with her. We did landscaping. She took me under her wing. She gave me responsibilities. And she like opened my eyes to another world that was outside of what I was always seeing. She talked to my mom and they both came and was like, you should think about going to YES program. So I ended up going to the YES program and I signed up for the GED program. 
And I went in, I did one of the pretests, and a lady came to me in the meeting and was like, you shouldn't be doing your GED, you should be doing your high school diploma. And she was like, before I go on, you're like testing beyond the GED, so you could easily take these tests and pass it. She was like, but you, should, you definitely look like you want more. So I was like, okay. She was like, how about you earn high school credits and college credits at the same time? And it's always been a dream of mine to go to college. So when she said that, I was like, okay, I'm all ears. And she pulled out the pamphlet and said, Gateway to College. This is the criteria, and this is what you can expect. And so I joined. It was actually awesome. It was like one of the highlights of my life. Uh, my experience with Gateway to College really changed my whole perspective of my entire life. So once I got into Gateway to College, it was small. Uh, it was students just like me. Uh, there were a lot of students who were trying to better themselves, a lot of students that were trying to find themselves, and I was doing the same thing, so I didn't feel out of place. But the overall atmosphere of the place was um, was like college-like. It wasn't high school, it was college. And I felt like I had moved past the years of high school and that I could be an actual adult here at Gateway. So, yeah. If I could go back to my high school self, I would say, do you remember that English teacher who hunted you down to do your work because she saw something in you? And I would say, yeah, I remember her. Talk to her. Don't run from her. Don't be afraid. Because I was really afraid of doing good and doing well because I stood out among others. It just didn't sit well with me. So. I would say, don't be afraid, stand out, and do your best. I would say I'm most proud about my journey, making it to, to university. And although I haven't graduated yet, I plan on graduating. So I can say, and, and being able to graduate, and like meeting people who are good and healthy for my future and myself. just through a computer screen. How's it going? It's going pretty good. I got the opportunity to start cosmetology at Waytech. Yay! And when I started it, I used my scholarship that I got yeah. from Morgan Creek. Yeah, I used it and I started going to school and then I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> wow! Yeah. I had no idea that you actually went to cosmetology school. I yes. knew you were wanting to do that when we talked. Yeah, I started going. I was just thinking about it. Like when I heard when I heard the the audio, I was like, "Wow, that was me!" Like, <laughs> and I'm still here, like trying to do something. I don't know. I just felt like it's inspiring for another girls because I know there's like other girls like me that they get pregnant like a teenage, and I'm just like some of them just give up, and like I feel like it. Like, probably if I would have gave up, like, I would have done nothing. I would not got my scholarship. I would have not started cosmetology. So it's like, you know, like, sometimes they just need somebody who to push them, like Roxalis, because she's always, like, telling you things and, like, giving you the best, like, advice, you can say. But they also, like, sometimes you need to see other people doing it so you can see that you can do it. Like, it's not only them, you know? I don't know, I was just thinking, a lot of things came up to my mind. <laughs> How's it going? Great, how are you? You're in Portland now, yeah? Yeah. Oh man, how did you make that move? Can you tell me what you're doing, what you've been up to, graduation? 
I know, right? Yeah, it's been awesome. Um, yeah, I'm up here. I came after graduation. It's an apprenticeship program um, at a theater company, Portland Playhouse. We do acting, but also we do classes. And then we also uh, work in like office offices. So we do like I was doing some uh, program evaluation, entering in data and creating like infographics with all the information for the kids. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm here just for the apprenticeship. So I'll be moving back in June because the apprenticeship is over. Um, but I do plan to move to Atlanta so I can further my career in, the I mean, in TV and film. Um, I love theater. I love writing for theater. I love participating in theater, but I do want to delve into film a little bit more. And also, um, what's amazing is that uh, I went through the Gateway to College program, of course you know, and there are two, it started here in Portland. So two people who are um, a, a part of the Gateway College program are here. So they've been like helping me out, like when I first got here. So I felt like I knew someone. Yeah. It was so cool. Yeah, and they stay like right up the street from me. We've had dinner and they come to see the show. So it's been fantastic, like to say the least. Hey, Marquis. Hola, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. It's good to see you. It's nice to see you as well. This has actually been a few years. I yeah. know. It's been a long been a time. Yeah. Yeah, what have you been up to? Work, 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 work. I'm working in the hospital now. I've been there for about a year and seven months. Um, I have been also thinking about going back to school as far as where I'm at now. Like I've moved into my first apartment, 22 years young. Um, I know I don't have all the resources, but I wanna keep continuing to grow into a better person, you know? So I wanna keep striving. My uh, siblings are still in school. Like all of them are actually doing good. I'm, I wouldn't say surprised, but I'm actually proud that they actually wanna follow my lead, you know? Like, I think I have set the bar really high for them and to watch me grow this thus far and they follow me it's like okay it, it, it really makes me proud it really does i look back almost every day every other day and just think about i really overcame obstacles i never thought i would have I don't really disclose my life as as for what it is, but I'd rather somebody look at it and be like, I can do the same thing he's doing, or I can do it better, or maybe I could do it this this way. Like I I I really want to see the impact of it. Like everyone has potential, even though you may feel as though you don't, you do. Like I was at rock bottom. Didn't feel like I could do anything. But look at me now. <laughs>